One of the real housewives of Beverly Hills, Diana Jenkins, has just dismissed a lawsuit that she was using to try to find uh, some kind of internet troll who was making a bunch of posts about uh, the son of one of her cast members. I'm Kevin Newper. I'm an attorney at Newper & Covey. Why should you care about this? Well, if you uh, don't watch The Real Housewives, then you may be interested in how a John Doe lawsuit works, and maybe you're an internet troll and are wondering how uh, lawyers try to track down those trolls. In this case, they failed, uh, but sometimes they succeed. I've, I've done lawsuits like this where you had no idea who you're even suing and have successfully found them. It's kind of interesting from a legal perspective, and if you do like The Real Housewives and are watching all these, you know, however many dozen spinoffs they have of this thing at this point, uh, then you probably are well into the drama of uh, Diana Jenkins, uh, who is sort of very dramatic, and uh, Garcelle Beauvais, who is her uh, antagonist or protagonist in this drama or whatever. They all get in beefs constantly, and that's kind of what this all stems from, is that uh, all the cast members for uh, drama purposes are um, getting into constant drama, and they get in fights with each other, and that spills over into real life, and I think this one spilled over, unfortunately, uh, to some degree in real life, where um, uh, Garcelle's 14-year-old son was getting bullied online by who knows who, um, but uh, uh, Diana Jenkins was getting blamed for this. Basically, people were saying, look, you, you, y'all you, have this beef with one another. Uh, clearly, you're behind this. There, you, there's a bot army that you're using to go harass this 14-year-old, uh, and, you know, how horrible to do that, which obviously it is horrible. The question is who's doing it. So Diana Jenkins' response was to go file a lawsuit trying to find out who these people are. As a real way, you, something you can do in a lawsuit, if you've been injured by someone, you can go try to find who it is if it's someone on the internet. Um, and I'm going to walk you all through what happened, how these lawsuits work, uh, what all this drama was for people who don't pay any attention to the myriad housewives <laughs> running around all trying to cause as much drama as possible. And, uh, you know, why did she have to dismiss it? Because it looks like this was, I will say at the outset that I do think from looking at these documents, this was a legitimate effort to try to find whoever was behind this. Uh, and there was a good reason that the the judge kind of stepped in and said, hey, um, I don't think you can really do this anymore. And then I think that she... Uh, Diana Jenkins was kind of forced to drop the lawsuit, uh, not, not ordered to, but it was very clear from the judge's um, rulings that this was not going to be allowed to go forward uh, unless someone who actually had been injured steps in here, injured directly rather by the, the anonymous trolls. So how did this happen? Uh, what's going on here? And, and what is all this drama that they have sort of concocted between themselves and then wrapped in some unknown uh, dough is what they'd call them into it. So for the non-Housewives fans, just so you can get an idea who the players are in this little drama, uh, this one is Diana Jenkins. Uh, this, you know, they all kind of, they're all Housewives, I guess, but uh, she is a particular subject of drama. She, um, someone who originally was a Bos in Bosnia, she lived in Bosnia. If you don't know where that is, it's in Europe. Um, in the 1990s, there was a big war there. Um, there was a lot, NATO was bombing them, and so it's sort of, Second verse, same as the first for for history. You know, obviously we're having a big war in Europe right now, and so she was a refugee from that. Uh, she moved to London. Uh, she married a very very wealthy banker, a bank executive at an important bank in London, uh, and then has sort of been a socialite for many years. Um, she's got another lawsuit going on, part of the drama that you know it's out there, and so I'll just mention it. Uh, she's suing this gossip columnist from a, a, a website called Crazy Days and Nights. It's like an anonymous. He's also a lawyer, apparently. Um, called Enty, E-N-T-Y. Uh, he's been making a bunch of accusations against her for a number of years, saying that she was a, actually a madam uh, that sort of arranged stuff for very wealthy men or whatever, and that she's got a lawsuit saying that, no, she says that's not true at all. She's being defamed. Uh, that's another a story for another video. I'm, I'm looking at that one as well, potentially, as something I can do, because it's very, you know, uh, she's trying to, uh, she's, this is not the only John Doe lawsuit I guess she's going on, because she has going on, uh, because this Enty guy is anonymous, and she's basically trying to find him in that lawsuit to try to see like, hey, can I sue this guy who's been saying all this stuff about me uh, and all that. You know, I, I mentioned that drama because it's part of why, you know, the, her whole arc, her story arc on the show. But then part of her arc is this conflict that they're having with uh, this other housewife. So I'll introduce her as well, just so you can know who that is. So this is uh, Garcelle Beauvais. She's the other housewife who is on sort of the other end of the drama here, and she's the one whose son was being uh, harassed on, and this is a 14-year-old uh, when this was happening, so this is entirely unacceptable whoever was doing it, um, and uh, the, the she she is basically, she's had a very long acting and kind of modeling career uh, in a lot of movies that you probably would have heard of. She was in Coming to America, the first one and the second one, but in the original, I, th I think she was kind of like a background, um, uh, one of the people off in, in country that uh, Eddie Murphy came from. <laughs> like they had a bunch of sort of people. So she's in it for a little bit. Um, but she also has a number of roles. Uh, if you look at her Wikipedia, it's just a ton of TV series. You probably know 
uh, the most recent one that I think I saw her in was uh, one of the Spider-Man movies. She was the wife of the vulture. I don't know that that's how you present yourself as the wife of the vulture. Probably not your lead on the calling card, but I, hey, I like the vulture as a comic character. And uh, in that movie, he's played by Michael Keaton. So definitely a uh, very respect respectable role in a very big uh, Marvel movie. Uh, just your your husband in the movie has kind of a <laughs> weird name, I guess. Um, but so she's she's had uh, all these roles. She's had a big acting career. Um, and then she now she's a housewife. And so she one of the women causing drama for a living. Um, but certainly you don't want that drama to spill over to your family. And that's the problem here that that happened here is that I think, you know, um, it, while they do go at each other a lot, they're sort of kind of like, you know, not to call them mobsters or anything, but the, if you use the mob as an example, they have rules, right? Like you don't go after the family if you're the the mafia going at, at each other, like they, they don't go at the women and children and the godfather or whatever. And so I think kind of like there are, uh, unwritten rules for housewife drama. And one of those is probably not going after minor children. And I think that some of the fans, when you see this, uh, of these, of these shows were up in arms, obviously about this, this, um, teenager getting targeted for, by whoever, uh, for drama. And they thought that, uh, Diana was behind it and we'll see kind of what all that drama was and, in and, and some of the specifics of it in the actual lawsuit. So we're going to look here at the complaint. This is the complaint. That is the first document filed in any lawsuit. It lays out what the person is alleging, who they're suing, and why. And you see this says Sanella Jenkins, aka, AKA Diana Jenkins. I think she's one of these people where you kind of, her name is from Bosnia, and so changed it a little bit to be more Americanized, more um, you know, being a celebrity friend, uh, <laughs> friendly, I guess. Sometimes they'll just want it to be something that like everyone can pronounce. So like you wouldn't pick my last name to be your celebrity name. Oh, I've, I've, I have kept mine. <laughs> so, uh, and so... Uh, she, Diana Jenkins, is suing John Doe Rose, 1 through 50 inclusive defendants. So you see there's not a real person's name there. Um, these are called Doe lawsuits or John Doe lawsuits or Jane Doe lawsuits. Um, sometimes they'll use Roe, like Roe versus Wade. That's one of them. So you see Doe, Doe or Roe, that's because at the time of the lawsuit, you either don't know the person's name or there's some reason that they have gotten permission from the court to stay confidential. So like in Roe versus Wade, person on the first side of this is always the plaintiff. Um, Roe knew her name, but you don't want to, like, there, in a case that involves something like, oh, I had an abortion, then you might not want to have your name be out there. And that person, you know, we would be talking about that person's real name for all time for that legal decision. So in this case, the reason it's Doe's is because we have no idea who the, this person was who was behind it. Person, people, she doesn't know how many, so she just says one through 50. And you can see it's a complaint for invasion of privacy by false light. That is a, um, a way to sue someone. Uh, it is a tort. We will talk about it in a, a little bit, what it means uh, later on. But it's basically like sort of call it casting a false light on someone, but, which is uh, putting them, making them look bad. It's kind of a short version of it, but we'll look more later at what she's saying. So in any complaint, they do kind of a story type introduction for what she's doing. And so here's, this is from Diana Jenkins. Um, uh, Garcelle is never involved in this lawsuit, really. We'll see at the end. She just wants to be done with this. So this is really like a Diana kind of thing uh, after she gets blamed for all this. She says, um, Bad people do bad things. It is wrong to send racist and bullying messages to a 14-year-old boy. It is wrong to deceive the public into believing an innocent woman is responsible for sending those messages. And it is wrong to mastermind this hateful campaign in anim anonymity. This action seeks to unmask and hold accountable the morally bankrupt person who has attacked a child and placed blame for his, her actions on Miss Jenkins. So that's kind of the sum of this is that there's this 14 year old who has been sent these bullying messages and uh, other people are blaming Diana Jenkins. And so she does not, she wants to go like blow up whoever actually did this. It says Miss Jenkins is a current cast member of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, a reality based television show chronicling the lives of several women who live in or near Beverly Hills, California. Garcelle Beauvais is another cast member on the show. And one of the storylines covered during this current season has been heated exchanges between Miss Jenkins and Miss Beauvais, which at times have spilled out on social media. Their confrontations, however, have remained professional and respectful. Miss Jenkins has always respected her co-star. Two weeks ago, however, defendants seized on these confrontations to launch an ugly and hateful campaign against against Miss Jenkins and an innocent child. And so, to unpack a little of that, so uh, they do do these like beefs with with one another. I think. Uh, uh, sometimes they are kind of professional beefs, so like they may not seem like it, but they may be behind the scenes, like not actually hate each other. Uh, I do think a lot of times they actually do hate each other. And so that may, you know, I don't know what the truth of is here. Uh, Miss Jenkins is saying like, no, we don't, or I don't hate uh, Garcelle, but, uh, you know, 
we were confronting each other kind of for the camera, as you can see that she puts heated in quotes. So she's kind of suggesting like this, my fight is not real. I don't actually have a problem with Garcelle. I'm just doing it for drama and attention. Um, and when she says that at the bottom that defendant seized on these confrontations to launch this ugly and hateful campaign, she's not talking about Garcelle. She's talking about this Doe, whoever this internet troll is, that's who she's saying uh, attacked uh, Diana, that's Miss Jenkins, and the innocent child, which is the 14-year-old son of Garcelle. So this says, two weeks ago, defendant used bots to post racist and threatening messages targeting Miss Bovey's 14-year-old son. Bots are computer programs that use artificial intelligence to post messages under fictitious names. Someone who posts racist and threatening messages to a 14-year-old is morally bankrupt, which is true. But defendant was not content with attacking an innocent child. Defendant ensured that the profile and content of the postings would lead people to conclude that Miss Jenkins was the one who had purchased the bots used in the attack. That conduct, too, is in the realm of the morally bankrupt. So why is she going on about how, like, she's uh, the one, or she's being attacked? Is she trying to sort of just make this about herself? Um, well, she kind of has to for this lawsuit. So that part of this is why she ends up losing and having to dismiss it. Um, and we'll get into that. There's something called standing. You have to have standing to sue. And that phrase standing means you have to be injured by the person you're suing kind of directly. It can't be just sort of like a, an indirect thing. And so the reason she's sort of hyping up like I was injured by this is because if she doesn't do that, then she kind of can't even file this. She And, and what is her motive for filing this? I do think part of her motive is like show and prove like this was not me. This was someone else. Um, I think the judge will see in this case, the judge at first gives her some leeway to do this. But kind of the judge reconsiders her own decision and ends up saying, look, you were not the person injured is not really you, Miss Jenkins, and the person injured is actually the child. And so you may be thinking oh, when you're reading this or hearing this, oh, you know, you're not really the victim here. And that is ultimately what the judge decided. And, and so to some degree, it, it is not really or at least my take on it is it's not so much about trying to make herself the victim or the public drama, but more because she really can't have a lawsuit if she doesn't. Um, and then it says. The result of defendants, that's the Doe's coordinated campaign, was predict predictable and swift. Uh, Miss Beauvais' son endured an emotional turmoil that no one should experience. Miss Jenkins and her family have as well. Dozens, if not hundreds, of people have posted messages attacking Miss Jenkins for an act that she never took. Miss Jenkins' rep reputation has been irreparably harmed by post after post, accusing her of being the type of person who would purchase bots to harass a child. Miss Jenkins and her family have been verbally attacked, threatened, and harassed as a result of defendants' actions. Now, she's trying to get this standing here, but I think the problem and what she runs in it, into at the end is that who's doing these attacks? It's not the troll. The, the troll who's the doe is not saying, yeah, you, you were me or whatever, or trying to pretend to be her, and we'll see that later. The, the people attacking Diana, or, uh, Diana Jenkins are complete third parties. So people have looked at what the troll has done and said, oh, uh, uh, Diana did this. Um, but she's not suing those people. She's suing the troll who, who was just posting these messages towards um, uh, Beauvais' son. So that's a standing problem because it's a question of like, it's not just a question of have you been hurt by someone in the universe? It's a question of have you been hurt by the specific person you've been suing? That's, that's the legal problem she gets into here. It says the action, this action, and that means this lawsuit, this lawsuit is the only way Miss Jenkins has to fight back against the anonymous coward Decided to put her reputation, livelihood, and life in jeopardy. Defendant designed the bot attack to create the false impression that it was Miss Jenkins who or orchestrated the attack on Miss Beauvais' son, i.e., so that people would hold Miss Jenkins in a quote false light. Miss Jenkins is now being perceived as the type of person who would verbally, and there's a typo there, it says J A uh, or J a child. Um, it's probably just some error by the lawyer those happen uh, when you're like typing and copy pasting and stuff. Um, and it says, her lifetime of good deeds are being undermined by a false affiliation with this heinous act. Ms. Jenkins seeks to put an end to this conduct for herself, her family, and Ms. Beauvais' son. Someone needs to stand up to, to bad people. And uh, when it talks about this lifetime of good deeds, she does a lot of like this sort of celebrity charity stuff. And I think that's what she's talking about uh, there. Now we get to a section called the parties, which is where you, they're generally included just to say like, who is this? And you can see uh, Diana Jenkins is sort of introducing herself. I'm a I do this philanthropy. I like, um, I founded like a international human rights forum. Um, I'm a mother and all this stuff. She's got a record label. It looks like uh, D Empire Entertainment and has a Neuro Drinks, uh, some kind of beverage company. Um, and then she she lives in Los Angeles, so that's why she files it here. She says I don't know who all these people I'm suing are. They're does. Um, I'm using fictitious names, and I'm going to amend it. 
uh, to put their true name in once I track them down. And uh, then kind of just gets into like, why is it here? It's because like the injury was here. Um, they start talking about the amount of controversy exceeds 25,000. That means she's suing for more than 25,000. Why does she say that number? Does not mean that she's suing for 25,000. Um, she's picking that number because in California, there are like multiple different kinds of courts. So you've got like small claims, you've got what they call limited civil uh, court, and then you've got unlimited civil. So she wants to be in the unlimited civil uh, court because that means you can sue for as much money as you want. And it also means you get more like broader power to do discovery than you would with a limited civil case. Basically, she doesn't want to be in like a little small claims court because then you're not ever going to find these people. The court won't let you. So then she starts alleging the facts about this specific stuff. So she says, um, you know, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is one of the highest rated pro programs on Bravo. Um, it, it has all these women in it, right? It says many episodes of the show include, quote, heated exchanges between the cast members on topics as varied as their background, some important and some otherwise, which is probably about true. They're just always fighting constantly everywhere about everything for no reason or for no reason other than ratings. <laughs> and so then it says shows on its 12th season. There's 10 women in it in Beverly Hills. Uh, Miss Jenkins is one of the cast members. Um, she did actually just drop off the show uh, in January. I looked it up and she um, is having like a pregnancy thing where she's Sometimes there are real reasons, sometimes they're not. Uh, sometimes they get fired and, like, get a reason. The show rotates like these women all the time. And so it's not surprising. Um, uh, uh, Garcelle is still going to be on this 13th season. Uh, will we see this drama in it? I don't know. With, uh, you know, will it be featured in the new season? Garcelle, Garcelle will still be there, so she may be commenting on the beef because they always, like, they, they don't... They, the beefs that happen out of the show are always pulled into it. Um, you can see that they're... They say Garcelle is like this other cast member. Um, she brings up that she's black and that's at least relevant to this lawsuit because the, that's part of like what the posts were. They were kind of like making racist comments. Um, and it says she's got three children. One of them's a 14 year old son. Um, and then the son is biracial. And then it says that they've been having confrontations between all the cast members in the current season, although that would be true basically any season and that they have, um, there are lines they have not crossed during these exchanges. So you can kind of see they recognize like there's things you don't do. And uh, uh, Miss Jenkins respects Miss Bove and her family. Uh, Miss Jenkins has not and would not cross from entertainment to racially charged attacks. So she's saying like, I'd fight with you for ratings, but I would not fight with you about that. Um, and then we get into these comments that were, and, and so and I, some of these I'm not going to read. Uh, I will put this on the screen, I guess, but they're pretty bad. It says, defendant, uh, uh, this is the, the troll, decided to use social media to manufacture a racist and hateful campaign that would appear to be an escalation of the confrontations between Ms. Jenkins and Ms. Beauvais. There can be no doubt that defendant created this and executed this campaign intentionally and willfully for the purpose of harming Ms. Jenkins, Ms. Beauvais, and Ms. Beauvais' son. Um, the first step in, the, in this campaign was to post messages using social media bots to attack Ms. Beauvais' 14-year-old son. And... Here, here's this, you can kind of see like basically the short version of this is like sometimes one of these fans of this show or, or whoever, they, I guess it's got to be a fan, like they're watching it, just goes crazy and decides that they are, you know, somebody decides they're going to go crazy and just start attacking uh, not the cast member, but this son who's on Instagram. And these are all kind of like fake accounts. You can see that they're saying stuff. This is a reference to George Floyd, which is pretty awful. Um, all of this is stuff where, like, there is, I will say, I agree, there is no reason that you should be bringing some random, like, cast member son of this. The drama, much of the drama is not real. You don't know what's real and what's not. The son is just sort of, like, existing. <laughs> There's no participation in the show. Uh, you know, a lot of the husbands, are, I think a couple of them have decided they wanted to be in the middle of the drama, but most of them are just sort of, like, props. And so they're they're just, like, regular people whose wives have decided to go on this show to attack each other on social media for fun and for ratings and for clout and like going after a minor uh, and he is a child if he's 14 legally and you should not be doing that. Like he's just not in the middle of this. Um, but someone decided they wanted to pull him into the middle of this and it is bullying. It is you know, very, not something you should do. He makes this sort of racist comment, which is almost even like threatening to me. I would be very um, concerned seeing that particular one from queen of the T. And then, uh, some of these are directed at uh, Garcelle. They say, like, you called Diana uneducated, but you did not even finish high school, Garcelle. So they can't spell, <laughs> but are complaining about her education. And then it says, uh, can you please uh, stop critiquing and belitt belittling Diana with your grammar? Your whole family are immigrants. Uh, Garcelle, stop using Erica, Lisa, Diana, Kyle, 
for it for your free publicity. I, I don't know all these people, but I know like that's Erica Jane who's got her own drama. Um, and then it says, uh, Team Erica, Team Diana, Team Lisa, Team Kyle, Team Dorrit, uh, Garcelle. I won't read that one. <laughs> that's that's uh, commenting on her body from some uh, modeling spread that Garcelle did. Um, Oliver is a drug addict. I think that's an, it says it's another one of uh, Miss Bovey's sons, which again would not be that's not appropriate to just. They're all putting this on like the profile, of, I believe, of the um, fourteen-year-old son. So this says. Yeah, they're putting it on the son. All these are going on the son's Instagram account. So they're they're attacking his brother. Uh, they say, uh, tell your mom to leave Erica alone. Leave Erica and Lisa alone. Your mom is a D-list actress who's getting any booking. So she had to join a reality show. Tell her to pipe down. How about your Mark Garcelle? How about your microaggression towards Crystal, which is another one of the cast members? Um, why is your mom obsessed with Erica's alcohol intake? Shouldn't she be worried about your brother Oliver drug intake in, in, instead? So again, going to this sort of minor and attacking his brother and his mom. Um, your, your brother Oliver is a drug addict, but your mom is calling Erica an alcoholic and making her look bad and make it, make it sense. So again, like not clear sort of the high school education of this person doing this. Um, and then more stuff about like accusing the brother of being a drug addict and just sort of doing all this stuff. Whoever's posting this and they are from all these different accounts you can see. So they're like kind of fake accounts. Is it a bot or is it just someone making all these accounts? I don't know, but we'll see they're, there has been like some information that was tracked down about what was behind these, but not enough to find them. Um, so this says uh, that, so Ms. Jenkins says she has nothing to do with any of this. It's just someone on here. Um, Ms. Beauvais was understandably appalled that her son received these type of messages, which obviously any mother is going to like not be happy to see her son getting dragged into this and bullied online. Um, her decision on the show was not authorization for anyone to send these types of messages to her family. Then here's a post from Ms. Beauvais that says, I'm usually a very strong woman. I've been raised to be strong. My life has taught me to be strong, but when it comes to my kids, it hurts. It's not okay. I've been te in tears all night. It's just a TV show, people. Scream at your TV, throw something at your TV, but leave our kids alone. Which again, they are kind of like well over the line. Whoever is posting this, if anything, should be doing. Um, then Miss Beauvais posts a statement from her son uh, on, her, on her own Instagram that says, uh, middle-aged women spamming me with racist and crude comments about my family is not what I expected for my first week of high school, which is probably, uh, and, and, you know, I would say that, uh, given the fan base of the show, it is kind of like very likely that th this is some middle-aged woman doing this. Um, and it is sort of like some people don't age, they can be in their thirties or forties and not be very mature. And whoever is deciding to do this, um, if the, you know, I don't think there are a lot of high schoolers like watching this to, <laughs> to, to decide to go after this guy. So it's probably, probably is something that is just some random person, but then you, you just sort of think of who out there, there are a lot of people who like could be middle aged, but still have like mental health issues or something or whatever. And so whoever's doing this is not <laughs> who knows. Um, but but it is a little weird to have like someone in their forties like going after a fourteen year old on Instagram. It's just a little strange to start posting like extreme stuff like this on that on that Instagram or even even really like going at their Instagram at all is a little odd. Um, but I'm I'm sure y'all have seen there are other YouTubers and stuff who do like there's a guy uh, Rice Gum. I've seen some videos about who's like makes, you know, diss tracks about 14 year olds and, and younger. And some people decide they want to do that for clout or for just whatever, or for being a complete lunatic. But so uh, this says that um, there's a section here titled internet sleuths immediately discover that the harassing and threatening comments almost certainly came from social media bots and not real people. Um, so that she's alleging that this is some kind of bot network. Uh, this says that, uh, that, Jenkins did not post these messages. That meant people would need to conclude that the messages were posted by bots controlled by Ms. Jenkins or someone associated with Ms. Jenkins. This is exactly what happened. Although a bot is not like making up the comments. I mean, a bot might be a way to like hide yourself, but um, somebody is writing this. <laughs> like, they, so they say like that they have some, they're quoting people online who are just, ran, these are just randos, just random people who are just posting, trying to investigate this. So one says, I ran quite a few of these accounts through been, through been verified and they're all bots. No traceable online history. These aren't real people at all. I ran the searches because I was hoping to find the other accounts they were linked to. Um, and then someone else says, um, there's like the Daily Beast, which is kind of a tabloid type thing that says, why is a real Housewives fan army sending racist death threats to Garcelle Bobe's son? And quotes some of these other people uh, showing uh, proof that these individual accounts, which are all like showing young, attractive uh, white women, that's what they say, were actually bots. 
potentially using the services of a bot farm. They seem to be purchased for a campaign uh, aimed squarely at this uh, 14-year-old and says, someone coordinated an online attack against a child using comments vocally supportive of Jenkins that parroted critiques about Beauvais from those same members of the cast. Now, that's, uh, to me, is not like sort of smoking gun evidence that it was a cast member because like all the fans are watching the cast on social media and on the show. And so they'll kind of like, like this, whoever was doing it was on team, whatever. They, they become like fans of one of the cast member and they'll start trying to continue the beef or whatever. And this person has just gone kind of crazy and gone uh, after the family members. So uh, Jenkins says like, basically there is no real person identified yet who did this, but that there are these online accusations that uh, Diana Jenkins was behind the bots. And she says they are false. Um, she says that um, here's, she's giving some examples of other, of like random users saying, you know, blank you, Diana, you're a disgusting human. So sad you were able to escape from Bosnia. Um, people saying like uh, that Diana Jenkins has sent out like an attack on a 14 year old son, that Diana is racist. Um, which one of you thoughts are responsible for this trash? And you could, and you could see the lawyers like defining thought. For what that's, I mean, sometimes you see some funny legal documents, you know, what's happening here is not funny, but it is funny to go read like something filed with a judge that says, your honor, here's what a, the definition of a thought, which is uh, T H O T, which is defined here as slang for someone who is sexually promiscuous. Um, they don't, they don't actually spell out <laughs> what that means, but uh, I, sometimes you don't want to uh, go a little too far in explaining things to the judge. And then this says, uh, fake account, Diana, you're 50, attacking a 14-year-old with racist comments. Um, and all these people are basically like accusing Diana of doing this. Um, and then they, uh, says there's some like really big reports. The Peach Report, which I guess is some account with a lot of followers, um, is, is saying, let's call it what it is. All of those bots conveniently coming for Garcelle's son's, uh, son after Diana uh, and Garcelle's recent, recent clash on social media is no coincidence. Uh, which is probably true. It's not a coincidence, but it also doesn't necessarily mean that uh, Diana did it. I mean, she, her fans may be totally unhinged. You don't know who's watching the show. And, and like some of you might think it's un unhinged to even watch it in the first place. Um, but but that's, I, I don't know. I think they're funny sometimes. Um, and this says, uh, so they could do some others. They say it like, it looks like Diana bought herself the bots that harassed Garcelle's son as a birthday gift or someone bought them for for her. Um, and they, a lot of people saying here, they're making some of these like accusations that, uh, she's suing over in this other lawsuit against this anti guy, uh, accusations. I don't, that is just people online are saying this stuff. Um, it says that, uh, then there's like, uh, news media that starts reporting on these, like people accusing her of this. So basically like, because the fans are saying it, it starts turning into articles uh, Diana Jenkins has hired a bunch of Karen bots to spam Garcelle's 14 year old son. So I've never heard of a Karen bot, but that, you know, maybe that's in our AI future, we may have Karen bots running around and uh, or, <laughs> the world will be a very different place. Uh, look at these disgusting comments. Usually I cover their names, but since they're just bots, go after them. All these people just were saying the same stuff that Diana Jenkins has a troll farm. Um, this place called Vulture is saying that, uh, people began suggesting that Jenkins was doing it. Um, Apparently this sort of spills over into the Vanderpump rules thing. And uh, uh, it looks that there's some, all these rumors about this. And I guess she's, it's just going on and on and on uh, because apparently this got everywhere, this idea that she was behind this. Um, then she starts studying YouTubers, someone named uh, Cheryl's world of uh, Sharon Lloyd, Cheryl Lloyd. Um, so like she's posting about this. There's lots of like fan blogs, fan channels and stuff. Uh, Brooke Ashley makes a little cameo appearance here talking about this, that it's her theory. And um, Diana Jenkins says that's predictable and intended conclusion. Basically, the person, the troll, wanted this to happen. The troll, like, made uh, Jenkins look like she's responsible. Jenkins has this post where she's, she's just saying, I have nothing to do with it. I've been accused of investigating the hateful or instigating the hateful and inexcusable cyberbullying of cell, cell son. Nothing could be further from the truth. I've stood for human rights my whole life. There is no place for hate in, in this world. Um, and then she starts basically saying like, my character has been attacked. I mean, I could probably sit here. There's a ton of these. Um, so then what did she do? So she starts getting into like, how do I respond to all this stuff? And I guess it says Miss Jenkins had been told to kill herself and all this other stuff. Miss Jenkins re received so many death threats that she consulted with security experts who concluded that the threats are credible. All this frightened and terrified Miss Jenkins. She's been forced to hire four around the clock bodyguards to protect her and her family, including her two-year-old daughter. It says that, uh, uh, Diana starts posting on Instagram saying, stop attacking my family. Um, 
and that she's gotten false claims online about like her character because uh, people are basically saying she's like the trolls and they they say all kinds of stuff here that she uh they're making fun of her lip licking which actually i did notice in the video she does lick her lips quite a lot <laughs> it's a little odd <laughs> but that she's using divorce settlement money to buy bots for bullying and uh that she's uh like paying for all these that uh she's harassing a boy and all this they're basically just saying she's the most terrible person in the universe and attributing the horrible comments to diana so then she wants to sue the the troll why is she suing the, suing the troll it's for this uh this tort that is called invasion of privacy by false light and people will use a shorthand for that which is just false light what is false light so you you have probably heard of like defamation uh libel slander so defamation is like when you are saying something that is injuring someone's reputation so if you uh the the son here could or even uh Marcel could sue the trolls for defamation because they're making specific statements like if you say like oh you or a drug addict, then that is a statement about you that is defamatory if it's not true. Or saying something like uh, saying uh, that uh, Garcelle has not gone to high school if she has gone to high school and that she's uneducated or whatever, then that would not be true. Like that would be def defamation. False light is a little bit different legally. It, it's not in every state, but it is in California. Um, the idea behind it is you are kind of like, you don't necessarily have to be saying something specific about the person, but you have put that person's You've created an impression of them among a large group of people that is false. So that's why they call it false light. It's like you put a shine a light on them and show some, something that's not really true. You, you aren't showing the whole truth. You're making them look bad for some reason that is is not really truthful. And um, the, the there's also kind of a differences that it focuses on the injury to your like mental state, uh, your embarrassment or whatever that you feel personally. Versus defamation and libel and slander, those are about your reputation with others. So uh, defamation, it would be, have you hurt uh, Jenkins's reputation by something false you said about her? False light is more, have you caused her to be distressed or embarrassed or whatever personally? Um, it matters a lot for this case, that difference, because um, Jenkins, she's trying, her goal here is like, show, prove she didn't do it. She wants to prove I'm not the one behind this, these bots. I didn't do this. Um, she wants to go find them and, and prove that. Well, she, she has to be able to sue them for something first. And, and she is trying to sue them for this false light because they didn't say anything about her. So she can't sue for defamation. They didn't say like, uh, Jenkins, you are an alcoholic or Jenkins, you, um, whatever. Uh, they were talking about something, somebody totally different. Uh, so she's trying to use false light under the theory anyway. And it kind of at the end, she gets, she, she manages for a little until the judge decides to, to completely flip her decision. Uh, but the idea would be that the trolls made Jenkins look like she was doing something that she wasn't. So um, that that kind of she's trying to use that as a maneuver around her inability to sue for defamation because she's kind of essentially like a third party to this. Like she's on the sidelines. She maybe has been uh, injured by other people accusing her of this. But has she been injured by directly by the trolls or core question of this lawsuit? But so she files this lawsuit. Uh, we get down. Uh, basically, you can kind of see they say that that. that the troll had a plan to portray Jenkins in the false light. Uh, I'm not sure that's really true. It does seem like it more someone who just wanted to like mess with Garcelle. Um, but, but again, Jenkins has to try to make this about herself to try to keep going in the lawsuit. And then she asks, you know, give me damages, give me all this other stuff. So uh, that's the first filing. What happens after that? So when you're in one of these John Doe cases, when you're trying to sue a John Doe, uh, in the days of the internet. Uh, it, it is all about finding data that would let you track someone down through, um, you know, sometimes multiple different companies, right? So you have to go try to find somewhere that somebody messed up and left their real name on something, which people do. Find some account somewhere that is connected to them in a way that their identity is uh, going to be revealed somehow if you connect the dots. Uh, it takes a lot of time. I will say the one, uh, I worked on one of these and the amount of attorney time in there would probably exceed a hundred thousand dollars just in the first stage trying to like track down who it was um but and, and it may or may not work right because it's all about like is there a clue somewhere that would let me kind of be the detective if i start putting together enough information from all the traces they left and these are not necessarily direct traces they're stuff where um in a lawsuit you can use what's called a subpoena a subpoena is kind of like a, a thing you send you as the attorney fill it out you send it to uh, some company or third party they're not part of the lawsuit so it's got to be someone who's like, it can't be the troll themselves. You send it to this, uh, like here, I think the first one they do is Facebook. Um, 
right? So you go to someone who, who might know, because Facebook owns Instagram. So you go to someone who might have information on that troll, you try to find as much as you can from that person, and then you keep going because you might get the Facebook may be able to tell you who like the internet service provider was. So Facebook or Instagram, you go, if you don't know what an internet service provider is. You have one if you're online now watching this video. <laughs> so you, you, that would be like, you know, if you just start thinking about who would you have interacted with, um, you, the person has to go on Instagram to sign up for an account. So uh, Instagram will know like who is the, like what is the IP address that the troll is using? And the IP address is sort of like a phone number for the internet. You have one of those two, even if you don't know it, they find that. That IP address will be connected to the internet service provider. That is a company like say Time Warner or um, whoever your cable company is or whatever that gives you the internet. Then you go to them, you say uh, Time War Warner, Frontier, whoever it is, uh, tell me who is, is at that IP address. And if the person is, you may or may not find them from that because people can use what's called a proxy that uh, hides their IP address. Put, so you might go to Time Warner and they're like, I don't know who this is. This is like, you know, <laughs> like a, that it's it's some generic IP address that doesn't connect to someone. Or they might be like, oh yeah, it's it's uh, John Doe down over in, you know, Arzana or wherever wherever they are. And, and you find who they actually are. Um, and, and the idea behind these Doe lawsuits is you keep doing these subpoenas so you can either run out of people to go try to find stuff for, or you have followed the trail um, through whatever. Like maybe you find the, the IP for the proxy company and then you go to the proxy company and be like, okay, what was the IP for whoever logged into your your proxy software or, or server on this date on whatever. And um, it's all like a, did the troll or did the doe leave enough information somewhere on accident to go find them? Here, they didn't find them but they go a little bit through the steps. So let's see what they did and how it actually works with the judge. So you can see what I'm showing you here is their first motion. It's in an unusual scenario uh, with these a little bit because you don't have a defendant actually here and the defendant is not going to show up. <laughs> like generally they're not going to be like, oh, hi, I'm the guy. Like here's, I'm the lawyer for the random person on the internet. Because if they do that, now they've just created more ways you can track them down. Like because the lawyer is coming in and the lawyer knows who they are potentially. And so they usually just stay quiet and try to like hide. Um, but that means that you are in like, it, it's just you and the judge. And that's what's created this weird dynamic here is that normally the judge has both sides. They have lawyers or somebody arguing uh, like one side or the other. And so they get kind of the benefit of someone trying to be the advocate for both people. And um, in this kind of case, it's just the judge herself looking at one side's brief. And then the judge kind of has to go do the work or whatever, or try to figure it out herself without someone trying to pick apart the argument. That makes it a little harder for the judge because um, you you can't just be neutral. You have to kind of like go, okay, um, you know, what's the truth, whatever. Um, and at, at first, the judge will see the judge gives them a little like leeway to do this. Okay, so this motion is um, uh, a it's it's called the mo motion for leave to conduct immediate discovery to learn the identity of the defendant. And so, um, what does that mean? Conduct immediate discovery. Normally, in a lawsuit like this, if there were two people showing up. You wouldn't go ahead and do this, what's called discovery. Discovery is where you do these subpoenas. You go start asking people for stuff, uh, get their emails, get their documents, whatever. Um, here, the, the uh, Jenkins, and this is uh, Sonella Jenkins, which is Diana Jenkins. She's saying, there's nobody here, right? No one's going to answer. No one's going to move to dismiss the case. So let's go right away to me trying to find out who this is. And that's normally how this would go. But you have to go get permission from the judge because you're going outside the normal procedures. So she files this motion. And this motion is basically saying like, look, I want to go, here's what she has to do. I want leave and that's permission. Leave just means I'm seeking permission. I want to serve a deposition subpoena for business records on non-party Meta Platforms Inc. to whom subpoenas seeking information about Instagram accounts must be directed. And, sh and should that not reveal the identity of the defendant, additional deposition subpoenas for business records on other non-parties until the defendant's identity is learned. So Meta Platforms is like Facebook. That's what they changed their name to when they decided that we were going to create the metaverse and thought that we were all going to go sit around in Mark Zuckerberg's playland with bad graphics and no legs. And that did not work out, but they're still, they're still going with Meta. So she's like, I'm going to go to them. Uh, I'm going to serve, start with them. I'm going to serve them a subpoena for a deposition and for uh, business records. Deposition is just uh, uh, like questioning someone under oath. And for business, business records are like, give me your records about who has these Instagram accounts. And then she's asking for permission to just like keep going until I find them. And so you see kind of this motion. 
and the motion like talks, it, it reiterates some of what's in the complaint about all this stuff, so we don't have to reread that. And it starts getting into the legal argument about California Code of Civil Procedure, how it lets you go like, uh, you can see a type of the finet known, I don't know what that, <laughs> some that errors happen. And then um, say like, look, normally you, um, like you have this like waiting period for discovery in California, but it's, you don't mechanically apply it. If there's good cause, the judge can let you go sooner. Whoever's perpetrating this, we need to go find them. And they kind of get into the, just like some legal cases that say why um, you should, should be allowed to go, like go do this discovery to find out who the anonymous person is. They're selling some other Doe cases um, where, so this is just quotes like about what the law is here. Like here's one that says, where it is clear to the court that discovery of the defendant's identity is necessary to pursue the plaintiff's claim, the court may refuse to quash a third party su subpoena if the plaintiff succeeds in setting forth evidence that a libelous statement has been made. Quashing means like, um, like it sounds like crushing or squishing, and that's kind of what it is. You, you, uh, to quash is like to, to basically uh, void a subpoena. Uh, because subpoenas don't, you don't go to the court to do them. Like if you're an attorney, you're literally just signing and saying, by power of the court, give me this stuff. And so people who receive those can say, I want to quash it. I want to stop it. Um, and they say, like, they're just citing some other law basically about why it's important for them to be able to do this. So what does the court do at first? Let's look at the first order from the court. Okay, so this is kind of the one that uh, it happens a couple of days after that motion we were looking, uh, looking at. It's called a minute order. So minute orders in California are just little short orders. They're not intended to be like big, you know, legal analysis or anything usually. Um, and... Uh, they, they just do them for like quick stuff that they're doing. So this says court sort of calls for a, the thing to hearing um, the court read and considered the evidence and rules as follows. It grants a motion to like advance the date uh, for uh, hearing this motion. And then it says the court finds good cause to grant the motion on ex parte basis, permitting plaintiff to conduct immediate discovery. So um, what that means is ex parte means uh, generally with only one party present. So you've got, you don't have the doe, the doe does not want to show up. And so the court has said, um, you know, basically you're allowed to go start doing discovery and go try to like find out uh, what happened with these, uh, like, like who is it, right? And, and, and so this is the first order. That, and, and then after that, they go serve their subpoenas. There's some uh, other documents in the record. And basically they start with Facebook, with this, met, or uh, Instagram rather, uh, Meta, uh, whoever you want to call them. And See, the next minute order that shows up after some motions is on January 6th. So this is uh, like two months, uh, no, three months later. Um, and now that the judge uh, uh, is like deciding like another thing. So they, they keep having these like conferences. Um, and this one's interesting because it gives us a little information about what's happening behind the scenes. So all the, a lot of the stuff like when it goes on, it's not public. Like you don't see the subpoena happening. You don't see what was sent to Facebook usually. Like there's, there's large parts about this that the lawyers are just kind of doing between the other people that are involved. And so you only can kind of tell from some of the court records what's going on. So this says, the court notes that there's a pending stipulation between plaintiff and non-party Meta regarding the 14 Instagram accounts owned by Meta. What is a stipulation? A stipulation is when you both have agreed to something and you sort of file it with the court or agree so that you both are like, okay, we have agreed that we'll do this or whatever. We've agreed to stipulate that a certain fact is true. Um, sometimes that helps you like avoid doing extra work and maybe you don't want to like, you both don't want to waste time. So you say, I stipulate that Meta like is a corporation in California, something like that. Here, it's a stipulation about these accounts. It says the counsel, who's the lawyer, represents that they have received subscriber information for nine of the 14 accounts, but Meta is not willing to disclose the information on the remaining accounts without a determination by the court that the First Amendment permits plaintiff to obtain discovery regarding the non-content basic su su subscriber information of anonymous internet speakers. The court hears argument. So what this is saying is that for uh, uh, five of the accounts, Meta is like, or Facebook is like, we, if the court doesn't, you know, they're in a liability perspective a little bit themselves, right? So Meta is sort of caught in the middle. They don't want the person who owns the account suing them for having given up the information. So they're kind of trying to say like, Look, if the court gives me an order to do it, then I'll do it. But I don't want to do this until there's court order. Why is it only nine of the 14 accounts? I'm looking at this, and I think what's going on is that some of these are outside the U.S. So the First Amendment only applies in the U.S. So it looks like five, if five of these accounts lead to someone in the U.S. or on a U.S. IP address, then it would make sense why Meta or, or Facebook already gave them 
information for nine of them because those those nine accounts would not have First Amendment issues. So the court says, I, basically is like, okay, I'll do this. I, the court makes a determination that under the circumstances of this case, the First Amendment permits plaintiff to obtain discovery regarding the identity of the Instagram account holders, and the court sets conditions as fully set forth in the stipulation and order, and so I, I order this. And so that kind of protects Facebook. Now there's an order, now there's a court saying, you give up the those five accounts, and so now Facebook can give it up to them. If they file another motion in this case, trying to get some more discovery, they want more stuff, because they're basically like, we, we didn't file for meta. And you start seeing, I want to flag just show this hearing, it doesn't really say a lot in it, but we're going to see something about it in a second, which is so see the first signs that the judge maybe is sort of like, I don't know if I should let you keep going in this case with what you're doing. So um, this this is a hearing, and it is, if you can see, it's March 2nd, 2023. Court says that there's this motion, it's an ex parte motion, which mean, again means just without the other party there, uh, to conduct additional discovery, or for leave to conduct additional discovery. Court calls it to a hearing, and then says, well, now um, I... Uh, I deny, you can see that the mo this motion for more discovery is denied. And then I set the, mo I'm going to keep this motion. Uh, I'm going to set this hearing for a couple weeks from now on March 23rd. And the council has to submit a supplemental brief. So you're, from this, you're sort of like, what's going on? Well, then we read the supplemental brief and see like what happened at this hearing that is sort of cryptic and a little bit vague in there as to what went on. So this is an, another brief that's filed after that on the 16th of March. This is by Diana Jenkins. And it says, at the March 2nd, 2023 ex parte hearing, the court expressed concern regarding the viability of plaintiff Sanella Jenkins, aka Diana Jenkins' false light claim, that Ms. Jenkins' motion seeks search warrant type information, and that the lawsuit may be being pursued for publicity reasons. The court asked Ms. Jenkins to submit a supplemental brief addressing those concerns. So we can't see, there's no like transcript of what happened at this hearing, but this is what the, we can kind of see what happened basically is that. The judge uh, and may have been, the judge may be reading all y'all. If you're you're one of these uh, Real Housewife fans running around talking about stuff on the internet, the judge may have been reading what you said. The judge may be a Real Housewife fan. You don't know, like you know, most uh, judges. A female judge is generally a middle aged woman, and so like that is the target audience for the show, as we saw earlier. And you know, um, so she may be familiar with it. She may be on team someone. Uh, she may just not care. Who knows? But the judge, you know, if you're a judge and you're on a case where suddenly everyone's talking about what you're doing, the judges will. Like the, there's a good chance they're going to go see what people are saying about their own case. And at some point in here, the judge has apparently been concern, become concerned that this lawsuit can't actually go forward legally and that it may just be kind of like a publicity thing, um, which, you know, that may be true. It may really be that Diana Jenkins is just kind of like, I want to show that I'm not the one and uh, she's doing this mainly for the publicity effect. That's probably true. It's probably true, you know, um, and... We'll, we'll see why the court thinks that she can't legally proceed with this. So they first say, like, look, I'm seeking limited discovery. It's not this search warrant type thing. Um, and, in, you know, it, and obviously it's not for publicity reasons because I'm continuing to pursue this litigation, even though uh, it says even though she has stepped away from the spotlight by deciding not to return to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So that's after she's sort of gone off the show and she's saying, like, look, this can't be a publicity stunt because I'm gone. I'm not on the show anymore. Although, you know, that's I, I could... Someone still may be concerned about like the reputational damage that is, has occurred if, if she's being falsely accused of this. Um, then uh, she says, like, the defendant, these trolls made deliberate choices through social media bot accounts and crafting messages supporting Ms. Jenkins to create the false impression that Ms. Jenkins was somehow responsible for these threatening and harassing posts on uh, Garcelle uh, Bobe's son's Instagram page. Or page. Um, and... You know, this is, I think, what the court, and we will see later that the, what the court started getting concerned about is, is their standing, this standing, which is the, is, is she being directly injured by the troll? We saw earlier that the trolls were, were not just talking about Diana, actually. They were talking about um, various other housewives, Erica, Jane, and, you know, really a laundry list of them saying, I'm, I'm on team such and such over and over and over. So Diana is thrown in there. The audience thinks it's Diana, or some of the audience does, but the troll doesn't seem to sort of be like, specifically saying I'm from Diana. Um, she keeps going, saying the same stuff a bit. Basically, here's what, and then we kind of see what she was looking for. She wanted to, she wants subpoenas now, not just on Facebook, but on eight different companies, Comcast, Verizon. Uh, these, these look like a bunch of different uh, internet service providers um, in Empower, and I'm not sure who all these are, but uh, Server Mania seems like it would be someone running the servers, the computers that do the accounts. 
reason there's so many is because there's so many accounts, I think. So they're trying to like track down every one of them. Um, then they're arguing more like, look, this is not a publicity thing. Like I wouldn't have kept going after the publicity died down. I've spent months working with Facebook for this. Um, she says that they, uh, you know, I'm gone from the, the spotlight. I'm in a high risk pregnancy. And so the doctor has ordered bed rest, which would mean you can't be on the show if you're like, you know, can't be running around. And there's a lot of alcohol drunk on the show if you've ever watched any of these. So that, that alone might stop you from uh, being on the show if you have a pregnancy going on. And then, um, this is basically sort of arguing, you know, oh, the court can put on guard, what what they say, guardrails, which means the court kind of can supervise this. The court can limit what I'm asking for. Let me keep going. And this says like they're um, they're trying to argue like, hey, I've made what they call a, a prima prima facie on its face showing of a false light false light claim, which doesn't mean you've proven it. It means you've made enough accusations that you've sort of shown it um, on the face of what you've said, uh, if that turns out to be true. So. Uh, they kind of go like, oh, yeah, I've shown it. I've shown it. Here's all these people saying this. Um, let's see if we get some. Uh, oh, it looks like here's some stuff saying that. Um, well, that's a, a different case. Sorry. It's, it's some other inappropriate stuff I don't really want to read into that uh, other people in other lawsuits have, have sued over. Um, and they say that uh, this was with malice towards Ms. Jenkins and uh, courts routinely allow this discovery. And yeah. So that so basically, let me do these uh, a lot of subpoenas, and that is that probably what's concerning the court is the number of these, right? Because every courts when they do subpoenas, there's kind of a balancing, and courts will want to, like especially in an, in an ex parte scenario where you're only hearing from one side, they, there is burden placed on a third party whenever there's, there's a subpoena, and so the court wants to kind of make sure it's like a fair burden. Like, it is are you doing? Are you trying to grab too much for the harm that was alleged and for like what? Uh, like, what's gone on? Are you asking for too many documents? They'll kind of like ask that. They will, like, if you're wanting to just, uh, when the when it sounds like the court called this a search warrant level discovery, a search warrant would be kind of like what you're seeking if there's been like a murder or something. And so I think the court uh, at, at this point is having the impression that maybe they're trying to go too far. They're involving too many companies um, and they're doing it for something where what the reason they're doing it is maybe not in the court's view an appropriate opinion or, or rather an appropriate reason. Um, and they say that one of these, this Empower company has already agreed to provide the name and address behind a cell number that was apparently associated. So probably got, they got a cell number from Meta for what signed up for one of these accounts. And then one of these companies, is, this Empower is like a cell comp phone company. So from this motion, we can see that at this point, the court's starting to have problems. The court's starting to say like, should I let you keep going with this? And now we get the court's last order in this case. And this is from March 27th, 2023. This is the court apparently has another hearing uh, and, and we kind of saw them talking about that uh, schedule for that hearing schedule for March 23rd. And this is on 27th. You can see at the top, the court has this hearing. Um, then uh, a few days later, the court has considered what they argued at the hearing and, and is now issuing an order. And this is the order that kind of nukes the case for Diana. And I think she, this is why she dismissed it is getting this order. So the court summarizes a little bit what's been going on. It says that the plaintiff filed this motion to conduct discovery, and she you, she first she did Facebook, and then uh, then uh, says that uh, in February, then now they want to do all these other eight people, um, and and this says that the first hearing the court this court expressed misgivings about its earlier rulings and whether there truly was good cause for ordering the various carriers to produce the names associated with each of these accounts. The court requested supplemental briefing on the justification for this additional round of discovery. The court saying, look. I uh, started to, uh, you know, I started rethinking my original rulings uh, and then, and, and it uses this phrase, good cause. What is good cause? So the court tells us down here um, for good cause shown, a court may authorize a plaintiff to serve a subpoena before service of the summons on or an appearance of at least one defendant. So good cause is a legal standard, you can see, uh, that enables the trial court to distinguish between proper use of discovery and misuse of discovery and to treat each in the appropriate uh, manner. Instead of strictly defining good cause, courts examine whether there's a proper use or misuse of discovery. So it's a phrase, and they kind of say some more stuff about this, this here. You have this, the court's supposed to be deciding like, hey, is there good cause for this discovery? And the phrase is total mush. And it basically means, hey, judge, just kind of like figure out what you think is fair, which often, often there are legal standards that are on purpose mush. And you want to just let the court kind of be the umpire based on the court's own conscience. And that's what is happening here. So... The court says, 
Um, I originally found there was good cause, but uh, but it is well established. It says a court's authority to reconsider its prior interim rulings on its own motion is well established. So what the judge is saying is like, I'm the judge. Um, I can change my decision, uh, if especially on what's called an interim ruling, which is not a final ruling. It's a ruling for now. Um, and so the judge is saying like, I kind of am deciding like maybe I did maybe I shouldn't have let you go forward with this. Um, the judge starts uh, talking about false light. What is requ required to show false light? So, and kind of set, explains what it is, defines it. It's a species of invasion of privacy based on publicity that places a plaintiff for the public in a false light that would be highly offensive to a reasonable person and where the defendant knew or acted in reckless disregard as to the falsity of the publicized matter and the false light in which the plaintiff would be placed. That's kind of like the legal de definition. And the, the things that she has to show are one, assertions of fact, two, actually false or create a false impression about her, Three, highly offensive to a reasonable person or defamatory. And if she's a public person, which is any celebrity, made with actual malice, which is like a legal standard that's kind of high. You have to intentionally make the statements like you have to know they're false. Um, and the key one that's going to be the problem, I think, is this number two. Uh, create a false, actually false or create a false impression about her. Because um, so the question is really, is this about you, Diana, or is this about the son? And I think the judge decides, no, Diana, this is not about, not really about you. Um, you know, Diana may be wanting to like sort of get something done about it. They re the judge quotes all these horrible posts. So I won't reread them. We already saw them. And the judge says, some of these are posts are vile. Some are hurtful. Some are innocuous, but none contains any indicia means any indication that it was written by plaintiff or at her command. The Instagram users who posted these comments used their own monikers. That's their own like screen name. None of which included plaintiff's name. Each featured a purported picture of the user, none of which contained plaintiff's likeness or, car or caricature of her. They were not signed by plaintiff or attributed to her by the person posting the message. They did not contain language that sounded like plaintiff or use words that might be associated with her. Uh, plaintiff, and it says plaintiff's counsel conceded all this at this hearing. The reasonable takeaway from anyone reading these posts is that they were created and posted by rabid fans of the program who are supporting plaintiff in her ongoing, highly orchestrated feud with the boy's mother on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Uh, had the individual or individuals who posted these messages created posts that made it appear that they had been authored by plaintiff, the situation would be different. But here, the users posted these messages with their own user identity, photo, idiosyncratic fonts and spellings, and, and unique writing styles. These messages cannot be reasonably construed as facts about plaintiff in order they represent them or present themselves as having been authored by plaintiff. So what the judge is saying is like, look, you got these 14 people. None of them are pretending to be Diana. None of them are saying it's Diana. None of them are acting like they're Diana. They're all pretending to be just random people. And maybe they're rabid fans. Maybe they're crazies. Um, but Diana is not the one being actually injured here directly. And the judge, the judge gives us the example of if they had come in and these people had actually pretended to be Diana or made it look like they were from Diana or said, I'm Diana, you know, Diana hired me, the bot, and I will post this. Then she would have this standing to sue. Then she could sue the troll because the troll's conduct would kind of be directed at her. But in this case, the, the person who should really sue is the son or um, maybe Garcelle. But Diana is just sort of this interloper, this third party who, while she doesn't like what's happened, cannot really come in and claim that any of these trolls were making it out to be like it was her. Now, there are people online saying that, but they're not being sued. So the question is always like, can you sue the person you're suing? Not just have I been hurt? By somebody, can I sue these trolls? And that's what the judge is saying. I don't think you can sue the trolls. And goes through some of the case law that was being cited and says, no, it's not it, not the same as this case. I therefore conclude that based on these 14 Instagram messages, they are not actionable by the plaintiff, which means the plaintiff cannot here cannot sue under a claim for false light invasion of privacy. Rather, they're just like crude hyperbole, which means exaggeration, reflects immaturity, but... Um, the judge is actually saying they're protected opinion under the First Amendment. Uh, I don't condone them. They're ra they're racist. They're disgusting. Um, but it's protected free speech. And so I deny your motion to uh, add to like keep going with these eight other internet uh, service providers. And then then that kicks off the final act. And so when you get an opinion like that, you know your claim done with that judge, right? Like she's not the judge is real clear. You can't go forward with this lawsuit. The judge doesn't actually dismiss the case. But that's the next thing they do, because I think if you're a lawyer, you probably know, like, this isn't going anywhere. And they probably told uh, Diana, look, sorry, because it is kind of clear, like, she's just not she's going to lose if she keeps trying to do this. So uh, first she files this, which is called a request for dismissal. This is just a real short thing. You can see it's not long. Um, and it's just asked to dismiss my claim. 
Uh, so she has to go to the court and say, uh, can you drop this case? And then at the same time, they filed this, um, which is uh, it's, it's a case management conference statement. Um, and the only reason they're filing this that I gather is basically to like explain to the fans why this is going away. Because people are probably wondering, and I'm sure there's people out there, there's probably people saying, oh, she just dropped this because she just didn't care or whatever. Um, so let's look at what they say about like, why are they, why is Diana dropping this case? So she says, we know why like that she lost, but what's, what's gone on in the background. There's a few things she tells us. So she says like, I, I subpoenaed Meta. I got the discovery. I started working with the council for Meta. I got the subscriber information. Um, and then like, I learned that the Instagram account holders had concealed their identity by using disposable email addresses and foreign phone numbers such as from the Ivory Coast and Mongolia, to set up their account. So it says Ms. Jenkins then worked with a computer forensic expert to determine if she could identify any of the persons behind the Instagram accounts. Through that work, Ms. Jenkins identified a potential name behind one of the accounts, A. Loeza. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm, Loeza, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, with IP addresses in Northern California. In addition, through the IP addresses Ms. Jenkins received from Meta, she was able to determine the entities that were the service providers for the IP addresses such as Comcast and Verizon, or she could not determine the persons who were using those IP addresses. In addition, Ms. Jenkins needed additional information to confirm the potential name she identified. As a result, uh, she filed this motion to serve these subpoenas. Then it says, you know, summarizes what we just saw, the court basically being like, I don't think you can proceed. So it says that after this order, which Ms. Jenkins respectfully disagrees with, she's been carefully considering the best way to proceed with this litigation. Um, and... In a further effort to address the court's prior questions and concerns in connection with the motion for leave to conduct additional discovery, counsel for Ms. Jenkins asked Ms. Ms. Uh, Uwe through her uh, legal representative if she would join the lawsuit as plaintiff and offered to cover all her legal expenses in connection with the suit. And Ms. Jenkins did not receive a response from Garcelle. So basically, like, uh, what this is saying is the lawyers are like, okay, how do we fix this? How do we go forward? So they try to contact Garcelle and say, hey, will you join the lawsuit as a plaintiff and we'll pay for it? Um, that would have let them go forward with the suit, I think, because Garcelle could have uh, made a defamation claim. There's things being said about her personally. So if she had wanted to jump in the middle of this, she probably could have. But you can understand why she might not want to, right? If they're beefing, um, I, I said earlier, some of those beefs get real personal behind the scenes even, and they are real. And so she may just be like, I don't really want to associate with you. and I, Or maybe I just want this done with, it's over. Whatever, there, there are good reasons why Garcelle might not want to just like come into the middle of this. Um, she may kind of believe, hey, this isn't you and it's just some lunatic. And so I'm just going to let it go. Um, and so understandable from her side. Um, but that is the reason they're asking that is because Garcelle probably would be someone who could keep the case going. And then it says that Jenkins also reached out to NBC Universal. Why is she doing that? Uh, the other the reason for that is that NBC might also be able to be someone who says like we're injured because you're saying stuff about our show or, or whatever, um, but they don't want to be involved either. So this says, in light of the lack of response and assistance, and despite having spent tens of thousands of dollars, Ms. Jenkins has concluded that she cannot proceed with this litigation at this time. As a result, she's filing this request for dismissal without prejudice, which would mean she technically could go bring it back again, but she's kind of just dropping it. Practically, uh, she's dropping it. If she said with prejudice, it means I can't ever bring this lawsuit ever again. So what is the takeaway from having looked at that in legal documents? I will say probably the one thing people are wondering if they're fans of the show or whatever is like, was this real? Was this a publicity stunt? I do think to some degree it was like about publicity. Like the motive, the motive was to make, to clear her own name. That's I think mostly why Diana was filing this. Um, I mean, she may have like not wanted or basically wanted to nuke these trolls too, but um, I think it's mostly about clearing her name. Uh, was it a real effort to do so? I think, I think that it was. I do from looking at all these documents, it looked like the lawyers went to a lot of effort. Um, they were sort of fighting, you know, against the court essentially, and uh, and and very clearly like doing sort of a real effort to try to keep the case going. Um, they were trying to track down a lot of people. It's kind of clear that they've done a lot of effort in doing this. Um, I do see. I, I don't think she's exaggerating when she says that she had them spend, uh, you know, tens of thousands of dollars or had a forensic expert. Like, it does look like that she tried to track this person down, and the lawyers were were on the hunt. Um, so and and. It also looks like the dismissal was not voluntary, that if she'd been given the chance, she would have kept going. So if anyone's saying like, oh, she just dropped this just for her own sake, I don't, I don't think that's why. I do think she wanted to hunt these people down from what I've seen. Uh, and, I, and I think that probably also means like just 
Again, I don't know the facts behind this, but I'm just looking at what the lawyers are doing, trying to read the tea leaves. I think that probably means she wasn't behind it because if she's, if you're doing this and you're behind the bot army, you're just going to uncover yourself. And if once you conclude, yes, this was a real legitimate effort to get the materials, because she's even dumping some of them into the record, what she found with this person she thinks might be the, the one behind it. Um, if you accept that it's a, a real effort by the lawyers, then you probably also have to accept that Diana was probably not the one orchestrating it. Or she wouldn't have, she would have just, you know, you easily could have done this in a way that would not be real. And it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like someone, I've seen some cases where um, people, celebrities are posturing with this kind of case and they aren't actually making much, much effort to find them. I don't think this is one of those. So that does kind of imply to us that at least for this one, Diana was not behind it. Doesn't necessarily say who's better or worse than one of them or decide to be for or whoever you want to be fans of. But I do think that we can sort of infer that at least for this one particular aspect of the beef um can you find a john doe they they may or may not have in this case they seem to have a last name uh you can see that the, whoever was doing this was putting these things in mongolia and the ivory coast and doing a pretty good effort to hide themselves sometimes they do sometimes they don't but you can see what the lawyers are doing if people try to do one of these they will go through the same process they will go track you down through the ends of the earth all over the earth and if the judge lets them and if it had been garcelle suing the judge might have um, then, then you can see how they can get a lot of stuff. And so, if you're an, you're an internet troll, um, one, don't go after like don't bully fourteen year olds uh, because like people will get very mad and they will go chase you, and it's just kind of stupid to do um, and mean and not necessary to do. But uh, you're not you are you can be tracked down for stuff you're doing. So just know that if you're posting things that are like personally, um, you know, some of those posts sounded threatening and and you can get caught if you're threatening people. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> that that's that's uh you know the sum of this and if you want to you know hear more videos about this you can hit subscribe i've got random celebrity videos on different kind of things like this and you can learn more about just random legal issues that are interesting to know if you're out there posting content you want to do want to kind of know these things like what can you do if you're getting trolled or, or you know like like what are the options so uh there should be a subscribe button and some other random videos to watch if you want to